Help us celebrate the class of 2021. KUAM wants to help you celebrate this touchstone moment in the lives of your graduates. For the months of May and June, we will flood the social media pages of KUAM with photos and well wishes for the class of 2021 grads. Log on to KUAM.com to submit photos and brief messages or captions. Then look for your special grad on KUAM Instagram and the Facebook pages. From all of your friends here at KUAM. Congratulations, seniors! KUAM News, in partnership with the Guam Visitors Bureau, brings you the Guam Safe and WTTC Safe Travel Certified Program Showcase. Look out for this powerful symbol for visitors, island residents, and industry workers alike, as it represents establishments with a consistent global commitment to safety practices. Stamped with approval by the Guam Visitors Bureau and the World Travel Tourism Council. Every Monday on KUAM News, we'll feature a different local business who's taken the Safe Guam and Safe Travels pledge to maintain health and safety standards to get Guam back on track. Log on to visitguam.com to see how your business can receive the designation, what businesses in our community are Guam Safe certified, and have the WTTC Safe Travel certified. Simply, always 
always rich with no money in that old tin house by the sea. Every day when chores were done, thought I said, go have your fun. Had to be back for the pigs we had to feed. How I wish that I could see Tata and Nana smiling at me In that old tin house by the sea Tata's English was not so good But somehow we understood And there was Nana standing by our side Hafiday and good afternoon. Thank you for joining us for today's COVID-19 press conference. At this time, I'd like to recognize the presence of the Honorable Lourdes Elian Guerrero Magahog in Guahan, Governor of Guam. And to her left, Department of Public Health and Social Services Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Felix Cabrera. Also joining us via Zoom, we have the Honorable Joshua F. Tenorio Segundo Magalahan Guahan, Lieutenant Governor of Guam. At this time, I'd like to give the floor to Governor Leon Guerrero for her remarks. Thank you, Crystal. Half a day. Over the past week, there have been significant developments in our COVID response. Earlier this week, the U.S. Center for Disease Control and Prevention confirmed the presence of additional variants in our local community. To recap, the CDC confirmed six COVID-19 cases had variants of concern, including the UK variant, the California variant, and the South African variant. What we learned from these cases is that none of these individuals were fully immunized with the COVID-19 vaccine. Just yesterday, the CDC expanded COVID-19 vaccine eligibility to adolescents 12 years and older. This expanded eligibility adds another 10,000 plus Guam residents who are now eligible for the vaccine. That means more people may receive the vaccine and the protection it provides. Following the latest development and within hours notice, we are happy to report that the University of Guam administered 70 Pfizer shots to our youth on Thursday, and we expect to get more shots in arms in the days and weeks ahead. Late Thursday afternoon, I also signed Executive Order 2021-10 relative to amending the quarantine program for incoming travelers. While we are still in a public health emergency and we remain in pandemic condition of readiness three, I am confident in the efficacy of FDA approved COVID-19 vaccines. Effective Saturday, May 15th, incoming travelers with verified vaccinations will be exempt from quarantine and asked to self-monitor for COVID-19 symptoms. I have with me, of course, uh, my Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Felix Cabrera, to elaborate on the vaccination verification process. My office and our partners in this pandemic are ready to stand up supports to ensure those seeking their verification documentation can do so. I'd also like to remind our community that a person is considered fully vaccinated two weeks after their last dose of the COVID-19 vaccine. This is to ensure that the immune system has enough time to develop the antibodies against the virus. Additionally, Executive Order 2021-10 increases the social gathering limit. Effective Saturday, May 15, social gatherings and congregations shall be limited to no more than 100 persons. Early this morning, CDC Director Dr. Rochelle Walensky announced that the CDC updated its guidelines, guidance to allow fully vaccinated individuals to participate in indoor and outdoor activities, large or small, without wearing a mask or physical distancing. Despite this guidance, we know all too well 
that our situation in Guam is unique. Being isolated in the Pacific, we do not share some of the same luxuries as our national counterparts who may drive to the next hospital in a neighboring state for assistance. Throughout our COVID-19 response, our priority has been protecting our people and our fragile healthcare system. Today, we have five COVID-19 patients receiving care at Guam Memorial Hospital, one of whom is, on, is on the, in the ICU on a ventilator. Should the number of hospitalized uh, individuals increase, know that I am prepared to re-implement restrictions. Again, this is a fluid situation and we will adapt as needed to safeguard our community. That is why I continue to urge the people of Guam to wear your mask. Now is not the time to let our guard down. While we've achieved our path to have, we continue aggressive efforts to achieve Operation Liberate Guam or herd immunity. For those who are fully vaccinated, we thank you for rolling up your sleeves to protect yourself, your loved ones, and our community. For those who have not availed the, of the free COVID-19 vaccine, I ask that you take advantage of the many vaccination clinics island-wide. We continue to make these clinics more accessible to the public. Just a few days ago, we had a drive-through testing and drive-through vaccination effort at the old carnival grounds in Tijin. You could get tested and vaccinated from the comfort of your car. For a complete list of vaccination clinics for the rest of the month, visit dphss.guam.gov slash vaccinate GU. Also, I'd like to call on the private sector and our community members. If you have a group of friends or family or even a group of workers interested in receiving the COVID-19 vaccine, we can come to you. Working with the surgeon cell, our Guam National Guard is ready to mobilize. Again, our goal is to make COVID-19 vaccine accessible to all eligible individuals. We will announce a hotline to call shortly. We will also continue aggressive educational outreach efforts for those still hesitant to get vaccinated. We want to answer your questions and alleviate any concerns you may have. Now I'd like to ask Dr. Cabrera to make his presentation. Thank you very much, Governor. Uh, let me just share a screen for everyone. Okay, so as the governor had mentioned that uh, we had to meet certain uh, criteria for us to uh, move ahead in this, uh, in this next uh, phase and changing our quarantine protocol. Uh, so I'd like to just run over uh, some of the numbers of where we are today, um, May 14, and these are numbers uh, as recent as 8 a.m. this morning. So we are at a car score of 0 0.4 at this time, and it's represented by the brown graph here, and you can see it's been barely a blip compared to what we've been through in the past. Our test positivity rate is at 1.5%, so has been going down from uh, the past week. Our effective retransmission value is at 0 0.9, uh, so also good. We want that to be below 1.0. And our daily new cases is also coming down. It's now 6.3 on a seven-day rolling average. Total cases, we've had just over 8,000. Active isolation, uh, 81. Total deaths, 139. All um, in, in on Guam, there has been there are currently six hospitalized patients with COVID. Five of them being uh, at GMH and one being at Naval Hospital Guam. And our daily new uh, tests are, that are being done on average is around 420. Our case doubling day 752. Over the past 28 days, we've had 211 new cases. 170 of that have been community uh, cases, and 41 of them have been travel cases. And so that brings about 19.4% of our total new cases identified being uh, from persons who have had recent travel uh, and are identified in the quarantine facility. And so uh, in terms of our vaccinations, uh, when you combine both uh, government and Guam and private uh, vaccines given on islands, it's been uh, over 138,000. And that has been over 75% of our current stock. And then altogether, when you include uh, Department of Defense uh, vaccination efforts, uh, adults, 16 and older persons who are have had at least one shot 
that represents about 67.4% of the population. And those who have been fully vaccinated, that represents 57.5% uh, of the population. On a daily average over seven days, uh, we have uh, over 600 uh, vaccines that are being administered per day. And to just briefly show um, the trend in terms of our hospitalizations, uh, so it's been well below 10. Uh, there was a slight increase, but it has now uh, it trended downward. We have had three deaths uh, in the past uh, two weeks. And so that's represented by the, the gray area here. And then as you can see, our CAR score has gone up a tiny bit, up to one, a little bit over one, and then now continues to drop towards 0 0.4 at this time. So um, going to this slide, this, a similar uh, flow chart was presented about two weeks ago. And same thing is where we say the criteria for consideration of implementing changes, which we have met today, is achieving greater than 50% of adult eligible population fully vaccinated. And again, our numbers at around 57.5%. And we have to maintain COVID hospitalizations less than 10. So even though there's been a small increase, we've never gone, uh, we haven't reached 10 and it's always been below that. And then also uh, less than five uh, total deaths in a, over a 14 day span. And so with that now um, effective uh, after midnight, uh, this protocol will be in effect where fully immunized persons with US FDA authorized vaccines and proof of vaccination uh, if that answer is yes, if you are one of them and you are entering Guam, uh, there will be an attempt to make an immediate verification. And before I get into that detail, basically, if you are immediately uh, uh, verified, then no further quarantine is necessary, but you must still comply with the 14-day symptom monitoring uh, using the SOUR alert and then highly encourage to download the Guam COVID app if not already done so. If we can't immediately verify, then you uh, will be subject to going to the quarantine facility with additional attempts to verify uh, within the next 48 to 48 hours um, as necessary. And if that can be confirmed, then, then we'll be released to no further quarantine. If it's unconfirmed, you will uh, end up in the, continue to be in the QFAC. Uh, and also if you're just not immunized, you will be in the quarantine facility with the opportunity to test on day six. And if it's negative, no further quarantine after day seven. But just like everyone else oops, um, that enters Guam, you have to have a 14-day uh, uh, symptom monitoring. If for whatever reason you're not tested, whether it's not available or you choose not to, then you will complete a 10-day quarantine in the quarantine facility. And so this is a change again from the 14-day. Uh, we will not uh, uh, be requiring full 14 days. And this here is in compliance with the CDC uh, minimum uh, guidance. So uh, how do we define fully immunized? It's again, uh, two weeks after the second dose of Pfizer or Moderna vaccine, or uh, two weeks after the single dose of the Johnson & Johnson Janssen vaccine. So here's the question that I think a lot of people have been wanting answered, especially with the verification. And so I'm gonna go over it uh, very carefully here. So the way that you're immediately uh, verified upon arrival, let, let's say in the airport, uh, is that you have to have your photo identification, which you need to have uh, to travel um, anyway, and a COVID-19 vaccination record card. So that's the CDC card that is issued out. And secondary form of COVID-19 vaccine verification and a declaration of individual attesting to COVID-19 vaccination signed under penalty of perjury. Now, the bigger question here is with how to define secondary form of COVID-19 vaccine verification. And so this is how it's being defined. So first of all, individuals who have been vaccinated on Guam, whose vaccination information are verified, verifiable via WebIZ application will not be required to present a secondary form of vaccine verification, at least have the, uh, the your vaccination card. And then that can be queried at the airport uh, into the WebIZ system to be that secondary form of verification. For everyone else, however, acceptable secondary form of vaccine uh, uh, verification include the following, vaccinating health authority record. So that might be a WebIZ printout if you don't have your CDC card, for example, or a, um, a, a printout from the health authority in the area, like let's say a county health department uh, that can provide their uh, verification. A, a vaccinating provider letter, uh, if that might be easy to obtain uh, from some uh, provider. Again, this is more geared toward those who did not get vaccine uh, vaccinated here on Guam. 
And then also receipt of COVID-19 vaccine administered. When I, we say re receipt, like let's say you went to one of the pharmacies uh, stateside and there's a proof that you either had an appointment for that vaccine, uh, you had a, a, a credit card receipt for, the, uh, the, for when you paid for that vaccine, uh, something of that sort. Uh, even a, a reminder uh, email may actually suffice for this. So basically that pulls into, uh, into the fourth category, which is other form of secondary verification to be approved at the reviewing officer's discretion, uh, who will be uh, confirming that either at uh, the port or at the QFAC. And so uh, with that, uh, that concludes uh, my slide presentation. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Cabrera. I now like to open the floor to questions from our members of the media. Nestor Lacanto, KUAM. Nestor, I see that you were just logging on again. I'll come back to you. Maury Maritita, Mariana's Business Journal. Do you have any questions? Yes, I do. Thank you, Crystal. Uh, buenos, uh, Governor, uh, Dr. Cabrera. Um, Governor, you, um, you said you wouldn't hesitate. Um, I'm looking for the exact quote. I have it. But basically, you wouldn't hesitate to go back to um, uh, requiring quarantine um, and that the situation is fragile. So if you, if you, I mean, we all hope you don't, but if you did make that decision, um, what sort of notice would you give people? I mean, so that we don't end up with a situation where they're in the air and then they arrive in Guam to find out that now they do have to quarantine for two weeks, whereas when they left home, they didn't, or wherever they were. Um, you know, one of the things that, like I said, Maureen, is our healthcare system is pretty fragile. And uh, we have uh, made the requirement or the decision that if our hospitalization increases to 10 and maybe um, and have that at a um, at an, the number 10 of 10 or more hospitalized patients, then when I mean I am prepared to re-implement restrictions, isn't just necessarily travel protocol restrictions. I would also implement restrictions uh, within our community because uh, that hospitalization is also uh, probably a function of um, uh, a surge and a greater spreader in the community. So um, in terms of timing, uh, this is pretty, if it, if it is a pretty um, quick surge that we are seeing, and it's overwhelming our hospital, I certainly will do it right away. Okay, but that may not affect flights is, or quarantine uh, for incoming travelers is what you're saying, just to clarify. It, it may or it may not. I know that's not a, a, a definitive answer, but uh, again, it depends on the circumstances. It depends on, are these coming in from travelers? It depends on, you know, is it a community spreader like the clusters that we have that wasn't really travel related? So there's a lot of um, different factors to consider, uh, but certainly will uh, do so um, and then act accordingly. Okay. Yeah. Um, May I add to that? Um, just, just to uh, learn from our history and just a reminder what happened back in August, um, uh, retrospectively looking, when the CARS score rapidly started going up and was by uh, five in the middle of August, the governor had uh, redeclared PCOR one. And then just a few days later, when the hospital, uh, hospital numbers went from 10 to 15 order, over a matter of few days, then that's when the quarantine uh, change was re-implemented, uh, where it was a mandatory government quarantine for everyone uh, incoming. And so that's just a, a and so we are uh, looking at that, and, and that will likely be a, a similar uh, consideration if we saw those, uh, God forbid, and see those, those same numbers again here. 
Okay, I guess I'm looking for some assurance that it wouldn't be taken lightly that, um, I mean, you know, because people are, we're now entering the vacation period, etc. And so, um, yeah. So uh, things are, um, you know, more than just for your assurances. Um, you know, we make our decisions again, based on science, and we make our decisions again, based on what we are experiencing. And, you know, if we feel that the experience may be just an abnormal, um, we certainly aren't going to change, but we will look um, throughout uh, the days ahead to see where we're going, where this is going to be leading us. So uh, it's not going to be taken very lightly. It would certainly be be taken very seriously. But I also want, again, to emphasize to the people that really, if we all go out and be vaccinated, these kinds of situations, um, uh, Maureen, will be probably less happening. You know, the, the, the opportunity for surges and the opportunity to um, overwhelm our hospital uh, healthcare system is going to be very, very uh, minimal because we are vaccinated and we are uh, herd, herd immunity. So I cannot overemphasize the importance of getting vaccinated, serious. Okay, thank you, Governor. I have a second question for um, Dr. Cabrera. So um, um, where can people find information on this WebIZ app? And um, Will everything be on your um, on the DPHS site? Uh, so, just for clarification, the WebIZ is not for uh, general public query. It's it's what the uh, Department of Public Health and Social Services uses to uh, to log and have a database of all those who have gotten a vaccine here on Guam uh, to the uh, to our program. So, the non DOD uh, persons. So. With that being said, um, it's a system that an official can access uh, and query to confirm whether or not you have been identified with your identification uh, as, as part of that. And so, uh, so if you've been vaccinated and you have a vaccine card, you will be in the web IZ if you were vaccinated here on Guam uh, in a, by a government of Guam or private sector uh, vaccine program. Okay, so really people who um, who travel just have to download the SARA app when they come home, so to speak. Yes, uh, the, the SARA alert is also a system uh, where it uses a, a, a variety of either text messaging, email, or phone calls uh, to get daily symptom monitoring uh, from the person who uh, has recently arrived. And then, so that's a program itself, um, and it's a, it's a web base as well, it can be. And so it just depends on what the preference is and ability for that person. If somebody has no internet access, then it's a phone call. Uh, and ultimately, if there is no way of contacting them, then it's an in-person visit, um, which will be subject to penalty, of course, if you are non-compliant with the SARA Alert program. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Maureen. Thank you, Maureen. Going back yes. to Nestor Lacanto, KUAM. Thanks, Chris. Um, Governor, this is obviously a pretty big step, but I'm wondering uh, what your thoughts are on the CDC's new guidance today that uh, masks are no longer necessary for uh, fully vaccinated individuals. Hold on. Sorry. Right now, um, I am not implementing the CDC guideline for not wearing masks. Um, know also that there are still restrictions uh, that necessitate masks that CDC has um, put forward. They still have to wear them when you are in any public transportation, um, when you ride buses uh, and airplanes and so forth. Um, my position, uh, Nestor, lies in the fact that right now, we, like you said, we are taking major leaps here in um, providing, in, in uh, lifting some restrictions and travel protocols. Um, we are also increasing social gathering by 100. And, and we are slowly and gradually, and I think very much uh, effectively reopening our island. And as we do that, I still want to make sure 
that we are still using uh, mitigating measures to continue to um, to continue our good work of containing the virus, to continue our good work of decreasing positive rates, to continue our, our good work of less uh, transmission and less exposure to our people. So wearing masks has been proven to be very, very effective in doing that. And just know that even if you are outside and you're with somebody or you see a friend or a stranger comes up to you, there is still that risk of transmission through aerosol um, means uh, if you're not wearing a mask. If you are wearing a mask, then your risk becomes so much less to uh, getting uh, infected uh, with whatever uh, aerosol transmission is happening at that time. So mask to me uh, is still uh, a very uh, significant uh, portion of our mitigation efforts. So I am not implementing no wearing of masks. I continue to persuade our people to please protect yourself and protect our community and wear your mask. Thank you. Uh, so Governor, uh, where do we stand on the reopening of tourism? You know, this uh, lifting of quarantine for vaccinated is not really gonna help with our key markets like Japan and Korea because they're still uh, well behind in vaccinations. Is there anything else that can be considered like maybe what Hawaii did, the negative PCR test would be sufficient? Sure, yes. Um, we just had a discussion about that in our economic recovery meeting. And certainly, uh, I am very open to considering that. Uh, at one point, when we were um, not in, in the second surge, we were talking about um, just requiring um, a negative PCR to come in, and that if you're staying from five to, uh, I think it's five, five days, that you are not required to quarantine. So those are some of the things, Nestor, that certainly... Um, I'm very open and very much uh, want to work with the Travel Tourist uh, Committee of GVB and also uh, to our economic recovery people to see if we can um, we can implement that in the future. So uh, and and even at uh, not even the 80 percent yet uh, current uh, sorry vaccination. Uh, if we feel comfortable that uh, our people will still be protected. So, um, and, and again, of course, you know, Nestor, and even the travel industry people are, are aware of this, that even if we do in the next, you know, three or four weeks, uh, work towards, towards that tourism uh, lifting of restrictions, that they're not going to come right away. We all know that. So, uh, it's primarily to be able to message out there to the tourist market that we are um, we are looking at this. We are looking at opening our tourism and we are looking at uh, doing so in a very safe, methodical way. Yeah. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, Nestor. Jerry Partito, Pacific News Center. Yes, yes. Uh uh, this question is for uh, Dr. Cabrera. Yes, uh, doctor, uh, we received a question in the radio today. Uh, the caller was saying that uh, getting a verification document on Guam is easy and not a problem. But what about those vaccinated in the States and coming into Guam without a uh, verification letter? The caller said the U.S. still has not finalized a standard letter of verification, and there is still no standard form in the States, much less internationally. And the caller also, well, uh, speculated that wouldn't it be easier to forge a vaccination verification letter <laughs> than a CDC document? Well, um, I must have a dop doppelganger out there because I was not on the radio this morning, nor did I take a question from a caller uh, this past no, no, week. No, 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 that was a caller not directed to you. Uh, a caller called the radio asking that okay. question. Okay, well, I think that's a fair question, and, and I believe it was an that we have already provided that answer as we went to the flow chart and as the uh, guidance will, will demonstrate that. Uh, basically, we want some second form of verification, and we're being pretty liberal with that definition uh, overall. So 
like let's say you 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 um got your vaccine at CVS stateside, and let's say there was an appointment reminder or credit card receipt of you going there and matching that date, and it matches your CDC card, uh, vaccine card, then that's a secondary form of verification. Now, would it be considered immediate and you can walk out of the airport from there? That may not be the case. There may need to be some time that, because uh, there are gonna be spot audits where they'll be uh, actually calling to these uh, certain uh, places and try and seeing if there is a true record of you being vaccinated at this site. So that's where the additional verification attempt within 24 to 48 hours may apply in that in this scenario. But um, but yeah, of course, when you're coming from Guam, it's clearly easy. And we made that uh, special accommodation for those who've been vaccinated here in Guam because we can. And so we are not requiring a standardized form of verification uh, that comes from uh, from anywhere in the States. We're asking for some kind of verification and we've given examples of what those are. Uh, I just wanted to add to Jerry, uh, can I just add that, you know, every state also has um, the web IZ program and they are required by um, the federal government, CDC, to uh, use the web IZ program as a uh, repository form or a registration form for data purposes. And so those individuals from those various states can ask um, their provider, uh, public health, to uh, also print out a registration document from the web IZ, which is what we'll be doing here um, for our local travelers. Thank you. And uh, this next question is for the governor. Uh, governor, as shown by the case of the two GMH doctors who returned from India, uh, being vaccinated and having a 72 hour negative COVID test is not enough. Is your administration considering stricter rules for those coming from hotspot countries? Our administration has figured out already the rules and that's the rules that um, Dr. Cabrera has put forth and we feel that that is pretty reasonable. I think it is adequate to protect our community. Uh, and just want to say, um, Jerry, that uh, no system or process or uh, program or restrictions is going to be foolproof. I think the foolproof goes to, uh, once we identify these positives, what are we doing for contact tracing? And we've done contact tracing. What are we doing with those people that we've identified through our contact tracing? We've addressed the people that we have identified through contact tracing. So although uh, what we put in is not foolproof 100%, there are other uh, mechanisms and other measures that we have throughout that uh, helps support that and helps us to continue uh, protecting our community. If I could add, um, so the governor's 100% correct. And, and in fact, when uh, you look at these cases, the story doesn't just end with two uh, doctors uh, who travel from India uh, coming back positive who've both been fully vaccinated. Um, the story doesn't end with that. It's what was the contact tracing that happened. And to this day, the investigation does not show anybody being uh, in becoming positive because of, they were positive here on Guam. They had restriction of movement privileges because they were uh, healthcare professionals that were essential, but they followed the protocol. And so that's why, um, and they were very uh, protective and were their, their proper PPE. So th that's why there has been no uh, link to any other cases related to them. So that's success. And so we should be confident in that. And, and so that's the, the true answer is that you have to have these multiple layers of risk reduction. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Jerry. Joe Titano, Pacific Daily News. Papadé Governor, Dr. Cabrera. Uh, Governor, you mentioned something about, um, you know, the possibility of, uh, you know, people want to get a vaccine, but they aren't able to go to a center of, uh, the National Guard come into them. Uh, could you tell us a little bit more about that program and the way that's going to be rolled out? Like how can people avail of it if they want to? Sure. Um, it is very obvious that uh, an effective way of vaccinating people is taking it to them. And certainly that's what we uh, are doing and what that's what we have done in the last couple of weeks. We are now doing drive-through test, uh, drive through testing, we've always done, but drive-through vaccinations, uh, which is uh, 
a program, I think that's been uh, successful. So um, Dr. Cabrera can give more details, but how that works is we have groups of people that are in a team and the, and we will go out to the various areas uh, and bring the vaccination to them. For example, we have, of course, you are aware of the homebound program where we go out to the homes and vaccinate our people. We also have um, the community vaccinations where we've set up vaccination stations uh, in GIGO. We've done that through uh, in working with the Archbishop uh, uh, and we've done it at uh, Santa Santa Lourdes Church in uh, Jigo. And we've done various uh, programs and stations like that throughout. But what we basically do is set up a team and that team goes out to the community where we feel um, is uh, much more maybe uh, able for them to be more uh, given more access to our community. So, Dr. Cabrera, I know you have some details on that. Yeah, one. well, it's uh, really, it's it's a opportunity to uh, make a request. If you think you have a group that is very interested in, in a number, like in, say, 50 or, or 80 or 100 uh, persons, say, you know, your business or church or a nonprofit, or you're a great grandparent and you want all your, your people in your lineage to get vaccinated and you can collect them all at one time in one party uh, of 100, then, you know, that those things can be, uh, can be worked out and we have to be flexible and creative. And that's why we're putting the call out there. And so the surgeon cell and the, and the uh, Guam National Guard is very willing to to do that and take that request. Now, it's not going to be immediate. It will take some planning with it, uh, but uh, the, we want to be able to do that and, and deploy the resources to you. You can you can send uh, the request over to AMC with Dr. Wynn. Uh, I know that the business community have been has been doing that or just through public health also. Joe, right. I'd like to add that we'll be announcing a, a number shortly. So anyone in the community can call and arrange for the the clinic to come to them. We'll be announcing that shortly. All right. And uh, just, just one more question. Uh, you know, there have been uh, three new variants of concern that have been uh, identified within the last three weeks. I believe the last uh, word from public health was that there was no reason to believe there was in the community. I'm just wondering, is that still the case? And are we taking any kind of special considerations, uh, especially given that if we get a new uh, strain into the community, it's possible that that could result in a surge? Uh, so on uh, Thursday at noon, I was interviewed and I said at that time that there were no known uh, uh, cases in the community. About two hours later, we, we got results back that did in fact show that uh, that there was a new uh, uh, variant of concern that was confirmed in somebody who without travel history and that was the UK variant. Now the good news is that the UK variant is very susceptible to all three vaccines. And so the answer to this problem is get vaccinated. And then this does doesn't have this variant of concern does not have to be a variant of consequence for us. All right, thank you very much. I'll refer to the next round. Thank you, Joe. Oya Nidalikle, Guam Daily Post. Hi, hi, Governor. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. I like your haircut. It's very pretty. Um, ma'am, I want to thank you so much. That has just made my day. Ah, uh, see, I'm glad. Um, you look too, you look nice too, Dr. Cabrera. You look nice. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of, sir, um, you know, one of the things that people are asking is where do they get the CDC card, uh, and how will people at the airport be verifying its veracity, um, and will there be additional people at the airport to do this? I'm imagining a group of pass or a flight of passengers of you know up to a hundred. 100 plus folks uh, walking in, all armed with their CDC documents. Um, you know, will there be people to kind of make sure and kind of expedite so there's not sort of a gridlock inside the airport and we're not having, uh, you know, hundreds of folks in the airport. But can we start with the first question first, sorry. Where do uh, where are people who are coming from the mainland, where would they be expected to get their, their uh, CDC card? 
So the CDC card, so this is mine uh, right now. I'm just showing the back, so I don't show the front. But, uh, you know, this is what's issued out to everyone who gets vaccinated and it's standardized throughout the country. So it's the same one here as Guam as it is in, in New Haven, Connecticut or, or what have you. And so the, um, the key part here is that if you want to go right through and with, uh, without delay is if you have your CDC card and you happen to have a printout of your Web by Z uh, report, then it's going to be very quick to query you and you just go right through. Uh, but if you only have the card, then they'll have, to, they'll have to look you up in the system, which may take a, you know, a, a minute or two. And, and then, then you're verified from there. And in fact, they're, they'll, uh, they're preparing to even print out a report for you at that time to take with you for further use or for future use. Uh, so that's uh, right now where uh, Director Arts San Augustine and, and, and um, Chief Public Health Officer Chima Mbakwe, they're at the airport right now working through that system. System. And so that's why they haven't been able to join us here in this press conference because they're working hard doing that for, for everyone. Okay. And so will, will there be additional folks at the airport, I guess, or maybe will it be the same folks who are there now who are kind of um, working with passengers as they fly in? Are they just going to be sort of repurposed for lack of a better word? Uh, for the most part, yes. There may be some additional uh, persons that are that are stationed, especially early on, until we work out the kinks. Now, please, people, everyone has to be patient because there are going to be kinks, and so they they, they will be some adjustments made. And we will, like everything else in this pandemic, we've gotten much more efficient every single day, and so that's going to happen here. And and so uh, we appreciate everyone's uh, you know patience with this. Can I just add um, uh, maybe? Uh uh, one note here that um, this travel protocol OA, is for travelers. And so um, please uh, just make sure that uh, our people know this. You um, ask for your set, you ask for a verification when you are planning to travel. So this information is going to be up on our website and uh, people will be informed as to what exactly it is that they need. And we're setting up a whole uh, call center just to deal with this. And so people can get their uh, record of verification. But again, this is a record of verification for when you are traveling. You don't need this record of verification uh, going from store to store or any of that. It's just, again, a record of verification for travelers. And as I understand it, uh, some of the private clinics are inundated uh, with requests for these uh, record of verification and uh, just want to make sure people understand that this is only required for travelers. Got it. Thank you, ma'am, for the clarification. I'm sure uh, many people who heard it and We'll appreciate it, and I know we'll, we'll uh, include it in our story too for um, our Thanks. readers as well. Um, Ma'am, you talked about reopening the community, and I know you know just in on the stories on social media as we post them, um, there were a lot of people who actually were very supportive of your decision on May, you know, prior to May one, um, to close or to to to, to pause before lifting the restriction. Um, and now, you know, people are just, they're still very worried. We have a lot of people who are still very concerned that we're probably reopening the island too soon. What message do you have for them? Yes, thank you for that. Um, as you know, uh, I paused it. And I paused the May, May 1st opening because uh, of situations that was occurring at that time. We had two clusters, we were seeing an increase. As it came about, um, it was in a community spreader. Um, as, it, as it turned out, um, it, did, uh, it did result in some positives, but not a sustained positive, which we felt uh, we had under control. So I just want the people to know, I know it is anxiety producing to um, just open uh, our island, uh, but please be assured that we have, as you have seen, gradually opened our island. And every time we have lifted a restriction, we gave it some time to see what the consequences are of lifting those restrictions. 
every time i have to say un un uh uh, uh undoubtedly every time we lifted a restriction we have looked to see what the data would show us in its consequence and so same with this we are going to now um, provide some convenience for travelers to come back we are going to provide some convenience for our travelers to go out into a community and only if they are vaccinated so it's not like we're opening it up without any preventive measures or barriers that would protect our people we are also um, opening up opening it up with great monitoring and we will see what happens in these next two to three weeks as a result of this. I am confident that we will continue to stay where we are in terms of our uh, CARS uh, score, in terms of our hospitalization. And the confidence I have is driven by the fact that we are already 50%, I think we're what, 53%? 57.5%. Uh, vaccinated. And the more we are vaccinated, the greater I think the protection is for our community and the better and quicker that we can open more uh, our island and allow people to do some normalcy in life. Uh, and that's the goal. So I just want to assure the people of Guam that your interests, your safety, your health is of the utmost priority in my mind. And I would not go forward with these if I don't feel that we are comfortable and confident that we have uh, have done a really aggressive uh, uh, preventing and protecting of our people. And again, it, it, it's not just me alone. It, it can't be, it has to be all of you. And wherever I go and people thank me for what we have done, I always remind them that it is because of them and that they have uh, uh, complied for the most part. All our, for the most part, our people have complied to the directives and the initiatives that we put forth. And this is the result. This is the result. And I'm hoping that by the end of this summer that we can be back to normal. Really, that's my goal. And again, roll up your sleeves and get vaccinated. Ma'am, when you say back to normal, can you just kind of define that for me, please? Vaccinated? Uh, when you say back to normal? Oh, back to normal. I would like it so that we don't have to wear our mask anymore. I would like it so that we can go and party with our friends without having to feel like we're going to sick, be sick with COVID-19. I would like it so that, you know, we don't fear for uh, the lives of our people when they go to when they're hospitalized. Um, that to me is normal. I would love it when uh, travelers come back without any kind of restrictions. I would love it with tourism opening and coming like we did before March of 2020. That's the normalcy. I would like us, I, oh yeah, I like us to be when I see people that I can hug them again and that I can, and that I can, I can uh, be much more uh, warm and welcoming. That's what I would like. Awesome. And you think we can reach that? by this summer uh, or- and I'm, I'm telling you, I'm working as hard as I can to make it happen. Dr. Cabrera is working as hard as he can to make it happen. Everybody, everybody in the community is working as hard to get it up. So again, roll up your sleeves and get vaccinated. Got it. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Oya. Tony Lamarana from K57, I understand you have a question. Tony, I can come back to you if you're having some difficulty unmuting. Yeah, can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, uh, good afternoon, Governor, Dr. Guerra. Uh, so uh, doctor, uh, just to clarify, uh, those uh, residents of Guam who uh, have been fully vaccinated on Guam, uh, upon their return uh, from traveling to the United States, all they would need is their CDC card. They wouldn't need any other verification. That is correct. 
okay. and that the, that secondary verification can happen uh, in person uh, there. However, it may delay your uh, your you being able to fully clear uh, from the from the port. Uh, so, uh, if you want a more expedient process, if you did have that additional uh, form of verification, then your the process would be much smoother and quicker. Okay. Okay, so so um, so uh, there are folks currently uh, over in the Ducet, uh, Guam residents who are uh, currently detained, who are fully vaccinated. Will they be released uh, at midnight tonight? Well, uh, we, they will be. So again, let's remember that quarantine is the is the default, and that this is a quarantine exemption process, and so that process will be uh, available to them if they are truly. Uh, qualified, and so uh, even though it's not being part of this pathway, uh, it would be it would be unfair to not make that available to them. So it wouldn't be at midnight. It will, you know, but the, the process will start uh, on Saturday uh, for uh, those individuals who are currently in the parking facility. And if they feel that if they feel they want to leave uh, uh, early and want to uh, get this verification process done, so it will be the weekend, and so we have to take that into consideration as well. Okay. But, uh, um, yeah, they can look forward to that. Yeah, because I had a caller uh, who is currently there uh, in one of the quarantine facilities and uh, actually has been emailing uh, the Department of Public Health uh, for the last five days uh, asking for verification and has gotten uh, no response. Okay, well, if it's five days, then uh, likely today's day six and uh, could be tested uh, today and could be released by tomorrow anyway. But, so, but yeah, uh, yeah, but uh, I mean, they were emailing for the last five days, every day for the last five days, uh, so they can get a copy of verification. So come uh, May 1st, uh, they would have that verification available to them. So uh, for returning Guam residents, uh, you said uh, if, without any further verification, uh, they would be held at the airport until you can verify. Um, how long are we talking about? Again, that's a detail that is unknown at this time. And once that uh, we get more experience, it's likely gonna be much quicker than whatever it starts out as. So again, we, we ask for everyone's patience in this process, not just because this becomes uh, available, doesn't mean that it's gonna be quick and efficient, um, but just to be happy that the option's there first, first and yeah. foremost, and then we'll work through it and we'll do it together. Right. You, well, you, uh, for everyone that's been vaccinated, uh, you do have a database of uh, all those vaccinated on the island? That is correct. So how, how hard would it be uh, to have computers at the airport uh, as uh, returning residents uh, come in, uh, plug in their name, date of birth, and uh, immediately verify, in fact, that they were uh, uh, vaccinated here in Guam? That's exactly what we're saying we're going, we're going to be doing. So you described it per uh, perfectly. Thank you, Tony. We okay. have a second round coming up. Nestor Lacanto, any follow-up questions? I think everything's been covered and it's four o'clock on a Friday, Chris. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nestor. No Maureen Maritita, any follow-up questions? Uh, just one and I am mindful of the time. So um, Dr. Cabrera, you um, the uh, website that we're talking about um, that officials can use to verify vaccinations of people on Guam. Uh, so the CNMI would, would have similar access to CDC records, correct? Mm -hmm. So the, again, the, the database is only uh, specific to the state or territory. And so we can see it. Uh, what I'm saying is that the CNMI would have their database, right? So correct. So you could cooperate. I mean, there's been some talk of it, you being Guam Correct. health authorities with CNMI health authorities to make access for our respective residents easier. That is correct. And so we are also at a different uh, situation at CNMI as well. We're not exactly uh, where they haven't had any community cases for quite some time now. Uh, so there have been talks about doing this in partnership and actually doing this in Tamden in terms of making this available. But I think right now what they are focusing on is mostly for the CNMI residents who have not been vaccinated. CNMI has been the first to uh, avail of quarantine uh, exemption um, and nobody else. Uh, so that may be what they, they may do as a pilot. Uh, it's, un, it's unclear at this point, but I, I do envision a time where uh, there will be sharing of information and agreement so that there'll be much easier travel uh, uh, throughout the Mariana Islands. Okay, thank you. 
No further questions. Thank you. Thank everybody. you, Maureen. Jerry Partido, any follow-up questions? Yes, uh, one last question for the governor. Uh, governor, the Guam Visitors Bureau is asking for your blessing with regard to their uh, with regard to their vaccine tourism project. Do you approve of that project? And will that present any problem with this new uh, quarantine policy? So, Jerry, um, my comment to that is that uh, I have asked a group of people to include GVB to uh, work together to present to me a proposal uh, regarding allowing expats uh, to come to Guam to be vaccinated. They have met, there's been discussions. They have not yet made a proposal to me. They have not made a presentation to me. So I don't know exactly what their program is. But in concept, I do agree that we should be able to provide uh, that opportunity for the expats um, to come to Guam and be vaccinated, making sure that our supply first has to be prioritized to our community. And so, like I have said earlier this morning in discussions with General Perna, that he sees no issues with it if they are U.S. citizens. And that if we proceed with it and we see that there is a increased demand for supply, he's more than willing to discuss the possibility of increased supply to Guam. So I really don't have not yet done a blessing because I don't know what I'm blessing. I have to see first the proposal. I have to see first the budget. But in concept, I do agree. I support it. I was the one that asked them to come and uh, develop a plan and a program for me to look at, to review, and to bless. Okay, okay, thank you, Governor. Thank you, Jerry. Joe Titano, PDN, any follow-ups? Uh, just a real quick one. Governor, uh, it looked like in the last two weeks, vaccinations might've slowed down a little bit. Uh, is that actually the case? And are we still on track to hit that 80% by a uh, Liberation Day? Yeah, you know, uh, everywhere you're right, Joe, even uh, in here, we are seeing uh, a plateau um, and also throughout the nation. So we are discussing ways that we can maybe motivate, motivate people to get vaccinated. And that's why we have an aggressive plan to bring it out to the community and to make it as convenient and as accessible as possible. Um, a uh, uh, case in point is uh, the drive-through um, vaccination. And people that came to the drive-through vaccination were very uh, appreciative because they had been wanting to be vaccinated, but they couldn't leave their kids at home. They could not, you know, they had responsibilities at home that sort of prevented them from coming to the place. So by allowing the drive-through, they could bring their kids with them. They could bring their dogs with them. They could bring their uh, grandmothers with them. And so we are just trying in every way we can to make it as convenient and as accessible to them. All right. So does it look like we're going to hit that number? We're just working as hard as possible to get there? Yes, I'm very confident we will. If I can just add that, um, we have to also remember that, you know, when we think about the path to half and you know the glass uh, half full or half empty but the glass just got bigger because over 10,000 more people have become eligible to get vaccinated the 12 to 15 year olds so that's a big big boom and and i i honestly did not expect it to happen uh you know until the summer and so the fact that it's happened here in may uh is great uh, but you know so uh, i want to thank the governor also for uh, helping us reassure the rest of the the community here that with this change in the in the travel protocol she did not make two major changes at the same time in terms of, of trying to adopt the CDCs, uh, uh, saying that if you're vaccinated, you don't have to mask in, in most situations. And so, you know, there's an intended privilege of being uh, vaccinated there so that you don't have to, to uh, mask all the time. However, there can be an unintended consequence uh, they have to consider because 
you have to consider the, the people who are not vaccinated, the half uh, portion of the, the glass that's empty, so to speak, and that uh, you don't want them going around not wearing a mask because they don't want to, uh, you know, because we, we don't want the mask to be a scarlet letter all of a sudden and then being a sign that you're not vaccinated. Uh, so let's keep it, uh, the, the, uh, everything uh, just basically fair and equal and that everybody uh, should still continue to wear their mask, uh, in, especially in uh, indoors and in close situations. Thank you. And uh, that was just a lead up to the question I really want to ask, which is, uh, are we going to see fireworks on uh, July 21st? A lot of people were disappointed last year. <laughs> yes, we are. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Oya, do you have any follow-up questions? Just a real quick one for the doc, sir. Um, you, Joe actually uh, led up to the question. I just wanted to see if I can get a specific number now. We've been looking at 100,000 as the number with respect to defining, I guess, herd immunity for Guam. Uh, has that target number changed because of the additional 10,000 who are now eligible? Uh, in all fairness, it has to change. So we, um, I, let me see if I have the numbers in front of me. I, I don't, but basically when you add up, uh, you're, you're talking about now 130, just over 136, I think, uh, persons who are now eligible in Guam uh, to be vaccinated. So 80% of that number will, is what it would be. You may, see another, you may see another shift in, in the age group between now and then. It's hard to say. Uh, we could be surprised. Uh, so it remains to be seen if that will change again as well. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Doc. And, and Gov, you said you're, you're fairly confident that we'll be able to hit that mark? Yes. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Oya. Last but not least, Tony Lamarena. Lamarena, any follow-up questions? You had a meeting with the uh, senators, uh, and uh, both of you laid out your plans on how the $553 million should be spent. Uh, come September 6, um, <clears throat> unemployment benefits uh, will expire. Uh, if it is not uh, extended by Congress, uh, what are the plans, uh, what are your plans to help these 29,000 people who are currently uh, receiving unemployment benefits? Sure. Plans is, of course, to open up tourism. Plan, uh, of course, is to uh, work with the employers and to see what kinds of um, measures we can help with them to provide the uh, jobs for our people. Now, I, I just got off again uh, from a meeting with the Economic Recovery, and uh, they will be working with the employers. Uh, one of the things that they are asking is to lift the waiver uh, of search, work search for the PUA. Um, they are also, uh, you know, concerned that jobs have been offered and people have not accepted the jobs because of the PUA. So there's a lot of uh, details that we need to work through and cooperate with, and that's what we're doing. Is, are there any plans to use some of that $553 million to uh, supplement the unemployment assistance? I mean, I know a lot of businesses are currently opening, but uh, not uh, not enough jobs to compensate for the 29,000 unemployed. Um, the monies that are being given to us is for lost revenues. Monies are for economic recovery. Monies are to uh, help those um, those uh, situations where, as a result of COVID, has been negatively impacted. So yes, those monies will be used in those areas. Okay. Uh, final question, Governor. Um, the uh, the uh, GVB, uh, they're planning their uh, Guam uh, vaccination and uh, vacation. Uh, but currently, uh, the two individuals that have come to Guam uh, stayed uh, free of charge at uh, our quarantine facility and then uh, received their vaccine. Um, I, I, you know, uh, I, I know that uh, one of them received the uh, Johnson & Johnson, which is a, a one, one regiment uh, dose. And uh, what, what would the benefit be uh, to our visitor industry if uh, we were giving the Johnson & Johnson? Uh, they get out of quarantine, they receive their vaccine, and they're on a plane uh, uh, out uh, of the island and have not uh, contributed to uh, our tourism base. Well, you know, if they come to be vaccinated here and they choose Johnson & Johnson, that's what we should give them. It's a, it's a choice. 
there's three choices of vaccinations, the Pfizer, Moderna, and the Johnson & Johnson. Um, you know, uh, uh, benefits for them, for us would be, yes, if they prefer Pfizer or they prefer Moderna, they'll be here. Uh, or they can just leave and come back. It doesn't really guarantee that they will stay for the second shot. So to me, uh, Tony, the benefit would be, hey, if we're helping vaccinating people throughout the whole global world, hey, let's do it. All right. Thank, thank you, Governor. You. Thank you so much, Tony. I'd like to give the floor to Governor for her closing remarks. Yes. Thank you very much, Crystal, and thank you to the media for those questions. And, uh, you know, I think we're at a point now where uh, we are making some very uh, good decisions about how we can control and protect our community and uh, contain what we already have done and continue on with the great progress and work that we have done to protect our people and save lives. And uh, I believe that uh, as we move forward with these uh, uh, changes, uh, I think it's going to be positive. I, I, we have to think positive here. Um, and so uh, I'm very confident that uh, we will return to some normalcy. I'm, you know, of course, my, my goal would be at the end of summer. But if we even go on to the end of this year, that would still be also a very positive thing to achieve. Um, but we cannot do this. Uh, I can't do it by myself. Uh, you know, Dr. Cabrera can't do it by himself. Um, we have to all work as a united Guam team. And I know there are naysayers out there. And I know there are a lot of people criticizing the way our decisions are being made. But I'll tell you, so far, it has worked. So I want to assure people that the way we are handling this pandemic is again a very unprecedented time and uh, I'm actually uh, very encouraged with uh, the great response from our community uh, feeling very safe and feeling very uh, protected and there's no way that I am going to compromise that with my future decisions. It will always be at the interest of our people, at the interest of our health and at the, at the interest of our economy recovery. So please, again, uh, I don't care if I sound like a broken record. I don't mind being a broken record. If everybody just goes and get vaccinated and uh, let's move our island forward in a positive way and let's refresh, reopen so we can build stronger. Thank you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please be safe.